uh, our agent called us and said, Bowie wants you to uh, do the European leg. And we said, no, we don't have time. Been Sorry, greatest become... pop star that ever lived, but um, we don't have uh, time for you. <laughs> and yeah. the thing is, we kind of uh, we kind of buried this. My brain is just saying that, did we turn down Bowie? And Christina said, oh, fuck me, I think we did. Welcome. We are Neil, Luke and Dave. 340 somethings reminiscing on the runners and riders of 90s guitar music. We look at the bands who soundtracked our youth on both sides of the pond and interview some of our heroes from the bands that defined a generation. You'll hear about the good, the bad, and the ugly of 90s guitar music. This podcast is stupid and contagious. Episode 24. No, it's not. It's 34. 34. 34. Fucking hell. That's a lot. Um, of the Stupid and Contagious podcast. I've got a bit of a confession to make. Um, I was a bit late this morning because I, I got really confused with their, their clocks. I really thought... I, I knew had, you I, would. No, I thought I was on top of it, but then I just didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I did. I had it. I had the right time and then I... But then I talked myself out of it to the wrong time. But it's amazing how many people get confused about it. There was an article, I think, in the Times or something this weekend, someone writing about what to do with your extra hour. Mm. You don't gain <laughs> you an hour, one. you lose one. <laughs> <laughs> this is in a national paper. They don't change over here. So, but I have to know for to meet with, with you lot. Farmers, isn't it? Farmers. Don't talk to me about farmers. <laughs> oh, the village has been up in arms. A farmer started a big bonfire the other day. Oh, and the smoke was going out all over the village and everyone was just going <laughs> crazy with rage. <laughs> Is it front page of the Berwick News? Did they yeah. everyone pick up their pitchforks and run after him? <laughs> Pretty much. The metaphorical WhatsApp pitchfork. I can. I do imagine Beric to be that sort of place, a bit wicker man. It is. It is that yeah. sort of place. <laughs> right. So this this week we're talking to Pear from the Wanna Dies. You wouldn't want to D, would you? You'd want to die. Well, I guess so. Might want to. I wouldn't. I, I want to E. E, please, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember those t-shirts? What was your favourite of those kind of t-shirts? I think I like. Um, I like the Pope. The Pope. Smokes dope was a good one. What about the take me to your dealer? Yeah, with the alien. It's good. <laughs> you had that. Yeah. Didn't you you <laughs> had didn't. take me to your dealer. <laughs> no? did not. Did I you thought your Andy brother Hash. had it. I, I'd be too afraid that my mum and dad would tell me off. Didn't you have like I'm Addy Hash kidding. gives you speed with like the uh, Adidas logo as a marijuana leaf? Um, so, what's everyone been up to this week, Dave? Your hair is looking good, man. It's settled right in, isn't it? Really? Oh, I thought I was having a bad day, mate. No. I've already told you about our exploits. What have I done? I watched um I watched the uh We Are the World documentary on Netflix. Have you watched that yet? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I mean it's a, it's one of the worst songs ever written, but um it's a good it's a good documentary, right? I that even made me warm to the song, to be honest. Same, I quite like that same. song. It's one of the most cloyingly twee kind of over earnest pieces of nonsense ever recorded but yeah i watched uh dr dre documentary it was quite good i can't remember what it's called now his life story is pretty cool isn't it? Quite, well apart from the brother dying and all that sort of stuff give us a flavor of it it was just a dj to start off with wasn't he it, 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 what was that group that he was in with just two other djs world-class wrecking crew that was it and obviously he just hung out with easy e didn't he and they I said, why not? Let's give it a go. And the rest is history. Have you seen the um, the Straight Out of Compton film? Yeah, it's good. Biopic. It? Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Yeah, I do, I do like a bit of NWO. They were good, weren't they? They were. They were. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't just about like their lyrics and stuff. Like Dre's beats on that are uh, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, he, he pretty much produced everything on that and the Chronic and stuff like that. Yeah. And Snoop Dogg. Yeah. And- Eminem and all that stuff. Isn't he the first uh, musician that became a billionaire? Beats, he's, he's got shares of Beats, hasn't he? Oh, the headphones. Yeah, yeah. it was bought by Apple, I think. 
Yeah, cut. so it became right? really an arrow overnight, I think. I also cut my own hair. I went one one step further than Dave because it was just sticking up. I just got really That looks all right, it. actually. I looks know. Better. I don't know what it looks like around the back or around the sides. Either, <laughs> but no I one just, sees the back. Yeah. No, I don't, so it doesn't matter, <laughs> does it? But I just got a, a sh- shaver, just took off the bits I didn't want. That's what hairdressing is, isn't it? That's it. Just get rid of the bits you don't want. So I just do my own from now on. Right, should we get on with this week's episode? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. Yeah, so a pair from The One That Dies. It's a good one. The interview's coming up shortly. Luke, give us a bit of a rundown of The the One That Dies. One That Dies. Swedish guitar pop? That's a bit lazy, but yeah, okay. Oh, you do better then, motherfucker. Go on. No, that's quite good, actually. It is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> Formed in uh, northern Sweden in 1988 in a town called, Dave, it's like Kulefta. Shaleftio. Um, yeah, listen to the interview for the full story of that. It's a pretty good story, right? They basically created their own scene of guitar music around in, uh, in that area, right? Yeah, that, that documentary kind of... Might be stars. That's it. I kind of mm. alludes to that, but then he, he elaborates on that story a bit more and we find out a bit more about that whole scene. Yeah, he was in a band called Breakfast in Africa, he explains, and then he met, they met Stefan from the group and then they, they formed The Wanna Dies, basically. But yeah, the, that documentary is, um, is, it tells yeah, a pretty good account of the other bands, really. That scene, um, isn't it? Yeah, that scene. yeah. So the first two albums, um, self-titled Wanna Dies, came out in 1990. Second album, Aqua, Aqua, Aquanautic. Easy for you to say. <laughs> it wasn't. But they were basically released in Sweden only, pretty much. So they, they got on the Swedish charts, but um, nothing um, beyond that. Not much impact outside of Sweden. But then with the third album, Be A Girl, in 1994, and the uh, You and Me song, everything changed, basically. So they went international. It took a while, didn't it, for that song to be a hit? It didn't happen in 94, did it? No, it didn't. It, um, on its release, it got to 119 in the UK charts. Um, but when it was re-released um, a little while later, it got to number 18. Yeah, and even then, then even like a year after that, it was in the Romeo and Juliet film, the Baz Luhrmann Romeo and Juliet, which is great. Let's just talk about that quickly, that film. It's great. It also had the Cardigan song in it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Love that, the Cardigan. Yeah. Brilliant Swedish band. I just thought it was brilliant. I think that film gets overlooked too much. Not by us. Not by us, <laughs> certainly not. It's one of the best sort of retelling of a classic tale in modern times ever, isn't it? And the music, the modern music, right? We were talking about um, dates last week. I had one of my first dates was uh, watching a video of Romeo and Juliet in uh, in my flat. In your flat? In Brighton, yeah. You'd had dates before that, hadn't you? Okay, the first date with that with that with that person. Yeah, I was going to say our, my uh, uh-huh. my Finnish uh, girlfriend, if you remember her. Ah, oh, the vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing against vegetarians, but uh, I just remember that she was a vegetarian. Yeah, she Luke was, was a vegetarian was. while he went out with her, wasn't Yeah, he? Luke claimed he was a vegetarian and it was nothing to do with her. <laughs> it wasn't really. It was more to do... I was a vegetarian, but it was more like as we were... It kind of happened as we were breaking up and then I, I, I remained it long, long after. And it wasn't actually. It was more to do with the books I was reading and the music I was listening to. So I was heavily into like straight edge at the time, like Minus Threat and all those straight edge bands. And they were they were kind of vegetarian and vegan. Not Morrissey, no, <laughs> no. But yeah, it's mainly to do with music. What was the first bit of meat you had after that seven years? I remember this. You had a bacon sandwich or something. That does sound right. Yeah. Gets you everyone got, in the end, the bacon. Yeah. No one can resist that sizzling in a pan in the morning. Sure. <clears> sure. <throat> sure. Succumb to it. I'm still kind of squeamish about me. I don't like any, I, I would, you know, it has to be really well done. And if there's any kind of, yeah, if it looks like the animal, I can't eat it. Like chicken wings and shit. I can't eat those because it's too much like the shape of the, of the animal. What if, what if you cut a vegetable into the shape of an animal? <laughs> can you eat that? That's a good point. No. No. That Romeo and Juliet, it was a great film. 
They had all the cars and stuff in it as well, didn't it? No smartphones, though. No, pre-smartphone, wouldn't it? If it was remade now, they'd have smartphones. Yeah. And he's doing again. And Leo looked pretty good around that time, eh? Was that pre-Titanic? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah just a year <clears> before, <throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was a good-looking young lad, wasn't he? Fresh face. He um, so you and me song, they also had um, Might Be Stars. Um, was a follow-up was a single also on uh, Be A Girl. Great track, right? Yeah. And so then they had a th- fourth album already. Bagsy Me came out in 97. Two, two hits off that. One called Hit, which he talks about in the interview really well. And one called Shorty. I don't know if he's taking the piss out of short people or not. I don't know, man. In the video, he's kind of like down. And, yeah, yeah. He's not doing that thing where he's, he's on the floor with his shoes on his knees. <laughs> he, might, <laughs> no, he, he might be. That's a bit out of order, isn't it? It's extremely offensive. Um, but also, so around that time, they were basically getting big in the UK. They um, they, ta- they toured with 60 Foot Dolls and with Sleeper, which you'll hear about in the interview. Kind of interesting. Um, like you said, like the Cardigans. And in, in the documentary, they kind of, they follow like, like the big band. I think the Cardigans kind of went to America and got big mm. there. And the Wanna Dies kind of headed towards the UK and got big there. And I think the Wanna Dies are not so big in America but they were much bigger in the UK. Well, the cardigans were just big everywhere, I guess, but I think they were more focused on America. I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's what happened, yeah. I think they sort of, they sort of locked into that, we're going to sort of break America kind of attitude. And they did. They had an, two more albums, one called Yeah in 99, another one called Before and After in 2002, and they kind of jogged along, split up in 2009. Uh, Pear did a load of solo stuff, and they reunited in 2016, and nowadays they're just playing gigs now and again, especially in Sweden. I think they play quite a lot. They've released two singles in recent years, um, one in 2020, I think, and one just this year called It's You, It's You, It's You, It's You, and it's a really good track. And uh, yeah. that's that's where we're at. That's that's the one of us. When you look on Spotify, there's quite a few of his later songs are in Swedish. And he's, that's because he's been on this show called So Mikke Better. I don't know. I guess that's so much better or something. But that's a show in Sweden where lots of famous people come together and do each other's songs. Oh, that's quite a good idea. Oh, wow. He did talk so about that, it in the interview, but we didn't really know what he was talking about. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's surprising that format hasn't come here. They just love it there. But, you know, a lot of their... A lot of these songs get really big. I was going to say, Dave, are they uh, are they like huge in Sweden? Well, I don't, I don't really know. I'm no expert on that. I mean, they're, obviously they're pretty, they're popular. By the way, my wife wanted to get that uh, her dad is also from Shalethia. She wanted me to mention. Oh, that. really? Shout out to Victoria's yeah. dad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's quite. It's not a very big place. Quite far north. Have you been there? Shalethia. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it farmland? But it's actually quite a big town for Sweden. But and the, but you know, the, there's hardly any towns. There's just masses of space in between every town. Is it as big as Seaford? It's probably about as big as Eastbourne. Oh, oh, that's quite big. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But with a lot more culture than Eastbourne, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, you got a top loader, haven't you, from Eastbourne? Yeah. So you have got top load. So they're basically quite similar towns. Shall we? Shall we have a listen to the uh, to the interview? Let's do it, Dave. Come on, in Swedish. Oh, my, my Swedish is embarrassing. Come on, but I guess that will make it amusing for people yeah. to understand. Yeah, it. yeah. Nu ska vi få höra från Per Wikstein från One Dies. Nyt. Thanks so much for coming on on our podcast. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate it. Um, no how, how, how are things going at the moment for you? Um, pretty uh, pretty well. We uh, we released a new song. Yeah, did some production yeah, rehearsals. Um, yeah, it's lovely. It's a it's a lovely wimpy little thing, um, but that's <laughs> the way we like it. Uh, and we've been uh, we've played two gigs up north. We're going to yeah. go, go up to Crazy Swedish Alp uh, oh, okay, nice. tomorrow. Uh, mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, nice or not nice, we don't, we don't know. We're supposed to fill in for uh, this mega oomph, oomph, oomph artist. So we'll, <laughs> oh, okay. we'll see, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Different kind of <laughs> audience, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's going to be some sort yeah. of after ski evening crazy beer. Oh, it's like the up for ski thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, oh, something be good like that. I, I don't know, we just got... Um, how did you get so involved in that? How did you? How did that happen? Our uh, our uh, our agent's uh, office is next doors to uh, this oomph oomph guys, and he said, uh, <laughs> "Oh shit, he can't do it. Do you have anyone?" And he said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll throw into one of those." And I mean, we <laughs> can uh, we we can cause mayhem, but we're pretty we're uh, we're we're a bit uh, older now, so uh, we. Uh, yeah, we play more on uh, on uh, on heartwarming um, stories. Oh, a bit of bo- bollocks, the uh, punk pop as well, obviously. But, uh, but yeah. we're not. We'll see yep. how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. On... Yeah, go. yeah, go, Luke. No, no, no go, 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 carry on. I was going to say, how's it going? Let me see. Uh, there there must be some... Oh, oh, how? Yes, now I can see all of you. Perfect. It's funny I'm doing this on the phone because my computer, That's all right. my oh, computer's nice. camera is so shit. It's new, and I read yeah, yeah, some about of them it are and, a bit. And, uh, and it's like, have they done this on purpose? Because surely uh, a brand <laughs> new, whatever it's called, uh, Apple screen thingy, it'd be. Yeah. Am I, am I barely viewable now? Can okay, no, you no, see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah okay. see fine. It's just me. See fine. All right. Neil, go ahead. Just gonna, just gonna say congratulations on on the new track. It's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. Uh, it's a great track, right? How did Thanks. that come about? Um, I think the melody, the the tune, just popped into my head, and I and I played the idea to to the guys, and they uh, they loved it. And then I we've been talking off and on for years. How um, yeah. It's it's bizarre how, uh, how how you never, or at least Swedes, we're not very good at complimenting each other. We we're, we're very <laughs> good at nagging and um, and telling people off and saying that you shouldn't do that. That's bad. That's wrong. But we we yeah. never say you're a really really good person. You, you really you mean mean a lot to me. You you're a sweetheart. Blah blah blah. So I just thought mm. I'll I'll um, write a couple of verses uh, about some of the people that mean the most to me. Uh, which obviously makes the, the song hard for me to sing because I start crying all the time. <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's the power of music, right? Mm. It is. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Come, come. I've come. got a couple of singles in the last few years. Are you, are you building up to a full-length album of all new stuff? Uh, no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so I think... This is what I, this is my studio. So we've got everything, yeah, nice. everything you, you need um, oh, in here. Uh, oh wow! Look at that. But yeah. uh, I'm I'm not I'm I'm into writing songs, not albums. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be another one coming out in a bit. I work with other artists. That's what I've been mostly doing the last eighteen odd years. Uh, yeah. Hanging out, hanging out with. Uh, Youngins, uh, writing, recording, producing, and occasionally playing with them as well. Yeah. Whilst uh, whilst the band was uh, on hold, but uh, it's it's good fun playing now. Uh, I don't think we're going to take over the world, which I thought when I was twenty five or thirty. Oh, you uh, so you kind of did it. though. You kind of did. You did for a while. For a bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, no, well, you know what I mean, though. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think now we're, now we're just doing it for fun uh, because there are other 25 year olds out there who are planning on taking out the world <laughs> and, and we'll let them. Right. And when they're 50 uh, plus, <laughs> they can lean back and say, Yeah, we had a good run. And then you kind of you're at it again, uh, catching up with old friends, uh, having a beer, yeah. playing some old tunes, and a few new. But I'm not going to be getting back to um, releasing 10, 12 songs every year or every other year 
because it's yeah. kind of uh, it's you know one one track, and then you leave it for a bit, and then another track. I I, I mean I don't know you might might be wrong, but I, my my feelings that most people don't have time to listen to an album. You listen to the first single or second single, and then you're onto something else. So it's basically uh, thrown away. Uh, eight or ten songs to, to, to do an album. Now, it, it seems mm. like, I'm sure there's a few hardcore fans that will listen to the whole album over and over again. Uh, and also... That, that's interesting. You know, is that from is that Spotify's fault? Kind of, yeah. It's kind of a Spotify station of, of things. But also, yeah. you know, mm. YouTube and, and everything. Uh, it's Everything is moving so fast. There's so many releases every week. And... Yeah. Uh, and uh, kind of proof to that theory is that uh, I've noticed that people release a song, which if we release another song, we'll we'll copy that. We'll do exactly the same. You release a song, and then you release another song with the first song as a B side, and then you mm. re- release a third song with a second and third, or first and second song as B sides. So you just add oh. on until you have like a mini mini album. Then you might release that as a vinyl, and then you start all over again. So you kind of re-release oh. the songs because pe- people might have missed the first release and then they have mm. it as a B-side. Just to keep re-releasing one or two tracks mm. uh, because it's such a storm of releases. It's really, really yeah. hard to cut through. Mm. But the way the way you're doing it, I guess guess that's quite a nice way to do it. There's no pressure. You just release a song when you want to release a song, right? That's that's a good way of doing it, I think. Sorry, I'm I'm just uh, distracted by my right. dog standing in a weird <laughs> position. I, I just came back, basically came from the vet now, uh, so she, oh. uh, she had a she had a claw um, uh, fracture. Oh dear! She's just now stood stood in a really odd position. I, what are you oh, doing? Oh, you saw her out. Go on. Yeah, the dog's, <laughs> dog's name is Bowie, by the way. For anyone that missed that at the start, Bowie oh, Neil. Bowie. 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 Sorry. Bowie. Well, it's big, uh, Bowie himself. It's, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not. I mean, it, it is Bowie, obviously, because David Bowie yeah. himself says Bowie. Yeah. But yeah. then it's funny because Ricky Gervais is one of the biggest Bowie fans on the planet, and it says Bowie. See, that must uh, be where I get it from. And I think, Maybe. I think, uh, I think uh, Bowie himself said, "You can pronounce it any which way you want." And then yeah. you go to YouTube and you say, "How does David Bowie pronounce his name?" And it's like hundred clips uh, back to back saying, "Hello, my name is David Bowie." Hello, my name is David Bowie. <laughs> so obviously he had a preference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So going back side. to what I was saying, I was just, I was just saying, um, yeah, the, the way the internet works these days, you can just release a track when you've written it. You don't have to wait to record yeah. an album, do you? So it's good in that way, right? Well, you, well, you used it used to be. Um, we used to play to promote records, and now we mm. release songs to uh, promote shows. Yeah, basically it's the other way around because you yeah. barely get barely get any money from uh, from so I mean you get some PRS and and things yeah, like that but uh, record sales right. yeah. Mm. yeah 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 um, all right well can you tell us a bit um, about the, about the early days of the band uh, in Sweden I mean how did it come together and all of that um, well if you listen to the second verse of the new single it's pretty much there. Well, uh, sorry, I, met this, I heard the mix- I'm, I'm, Yeah, I'm, I met this guy at a club called uh, Three Three Stairs. It was Three Stairs Down, uh, and I looked like a a young farm boy, which I was, <laughs> and he looked like a very very sassy, uh, cool, uh, semi goth. Post-punk well, I, goth, heard, I and... heard the the Dead Can Dance reference in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I walked up to him and I said, Do you like you too? Because I wanted to make friends with him. And he was like, <laughs> looked at me like, uh, Not really. Uh, I'm more into Dead Can Dance. And I was like, What the fuck is Dead Can Dance? It sounds really cool. I need to, I need to <laughs> be close to this guy. He knows shit. So then we uh, started hanging out. And I was working in a record store. Uh, uh, back then as an assistant and he used to come around and one day he said uh, we have a rehearsal space up in the old uh, industrial area we, we're having a party do you want to come around and uh, I brought the friends in my in my uh, inland farm band with me and we had some fun and they were rehearsing there and blah 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 and after a while 
we uh, we were in his backyard barbecuing, drinking beer, and he said we should form a band. And I said, yeah, we should, and we oh. did. There and go, that was the start of the one of those. Yeah. Wow. Love yeah. that. Love that. Uh, who else were you listening to apart from you two? Well, the U two era was uh, was uh, it's, I was all over the place. I was listening to reggae that led me into uh, the Clash, all the other way around. Maybe the Clash were mm. kind of flirting a bit with with uh, dub stuff. Yeah, um, and then I had I had you know I had a, a, a tiny little toe in like dire straits and. I was listening to Simple Minds and U2 and um, and stuff like that, a bit of Ultravox. But then yeah. moving moving into, bumping into Stefan, I started listening to Dead Can Dance and all those 4AD um, mm. artists and uh, a bit of Joy Division. And The Cure was a big, when I heard The Cure the first time as well, my head just exploded. It was so funny because I was with my old... Uh, uh, old friends from the Inland band, uh, and we were, we had gone down to the bigger town, Uma, south of Kolepta, to have um, mm. have a weekend. Mm. And I played them this, and they were like, "Hey, pair, we, we we don't get any of this. You're on your own, mate." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "I'm on my own. This is the best shit I've ever heard." <laughs> uh, and you know, it's like, a, a, it was like a forest. It was like a yeah, it's good. Do, 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 do. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is so amazing. Yeah, um, but they weren't into but then it. We, no, they did they didn't get it. And until no. they the cure the cure moved into pop uh pop land uh, eventually mm. with uh Friday I'm in love and uh, you know yeah. the he- yeah. head 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 on the door. Boys don't cry, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh but then we started listening to uh quite poppy stuff. Uh, eventually, like the thrifting, so the go betweens became our our big favorites. Mm. Uh, mm. So, um, so that was a big, and I think that was the big, the big turn for us. We mm. left kind of the the mascara and the the paisley shirts <laughs> and all of that, and uh, started wearing far too tight t shirts and and corduroy pants and and stuff and. Uh, they play trying to write the best pop chorus basically we, we weren't trying to be cool anymore we we're trying to just make the the catchiest right, looks, tune looks, yeah it's interesting um, all of the bands you've mentioned they're all um kind of in no hmm. not not swedish bands basically do you think that influenced your decision to write in english we were writing in swedish in the beginning because there, there were mm. like there was there was like a, a swedish class called eba Grön, which was uh Taken from the code name of uh, the kidnapping of our justice minister of justice, maybe mm-hmm. uh, it was a, a woman mm-hmm. called Anna Gathalena. It was a German uh, terrorist organization, mm-hmm. uh, and the, the operation was called Eba Grön, so they took that name, and they were pretty cool. That guy, the singer from Eba Grön, who later formed also a Swedish singing band called uh, Imperia, the Empire. Uh, mm-hmm. his his name is jo- Joachim uh, Torström, and I I claim to still to this day, if he'd been born in um, in an English speaking country, he would have been the biggest rock star in history. Oh, uh, really? His wow. uh, go- Google him. I'll, um, I mean, mm-hmm. young Joachim Torström. He's like he's like a he's like a mixture of he's sex on legs. He's uh, super cool, super 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 good looking. And he has a voice that is, that will just is both both a bit uh, distorted and very powerful. Mm. But he was singing Swedish, so we were listening to that stuff for a while. Mm. But then, yeah, eventually, I mean, the Swedish Sweden is a small country. The Swedish music world is is not yeah. very big compared to mm. you, know, you know you have America, Canada, <laughs> Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, many other countries. With artists singing in English, so that, that's obviously mm. uh, more to choose from. But then, I mean, Swedes have always listened a lot to English-speaking artists, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I found after a while, and this was kind of a, actually the band that, that we there was the the prelude or 
uh, whatever you want to call it, to the one of those. We were singing in Swedish for a while, but then I realized that the melodies became more likable, more direct. If the if the consonants and, and vowels were well, softer, which is, is is in English, so I started writing mm. in mock English, and then trying to find Swedish words, and then in the end I just said, "Fuck it, I'll just write in English," mm. yeah, because yeah. it's um, the the choruses are stronger melodically. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Have you seen um? Have you seen the documentary "Might Be Stars"? Oh, by the that American guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, we pick, we actually our guitarist Stefan, who um, we should form a band, Stefan. Uh, mm. He uh, can dance. he bumped in, oh. yeah, the Dead Can Dance guy. He bumped into it and uh, actually edited together uh, uh, a short film that we play yeah. uh, before the gigs. Especially Sweden, it's very it's very amusing because uh, of the voiceover. That's quite yeah. <laughs> The band now moves. And now the tragedy. <laughs> it's very cliche, uh, isn't it? It's like, yeah, 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 it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a there's a six seven minute version of it that we play in between uh, four band and us. Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, now he must have done a um, a hell of a lot of re- research because there's a few yeah, things yeah, that really I've, I've never seen. It's like a two hour yeah. documentary. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It's amazing. I have to see it's really him. Interesting, I have to see him full. Yeah, it's he really claims that he was uh, he, he helped uh, us load in or out in Los Angeles, nineteen ninety five or something. Oh, really? I I have no recollection of a no. particular non non crew guy helping us out, but I'm sure I'm sure he's not lying. I'm sure he was yeah. there carrying a guitar <laughs> or two. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about the the scene that 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 uh? documentary talks about and did you feel part of a well, scene in emerging? in the beginning well in the, in the beginning the the music factory thing uh is that we is that we're talking about i mean the scene that you were a part of that was coming up yeah, um, yeah. no we, yeah. we weren't a part of it. it it was it was us we, we started it that mm. was me oh, you uh you know before <laughs> before we should we should form a band he had a band called west european politics today and I had a band called the Breakfast in Africa. And mm-hmm. since I was working in a record shop, I got to know a bunch of people. And there was a, a music community community in, in Quilefta that was quite dull, quite stale. Uh, a bunch of blues bands and a bunch of cover, like hard rock bands. And basically the same members. It was like 10, 20 people playing the same bands. And they were playing Deep Purple and they were playing like blues standards and, and stuff like that. And we were uh we were into like post punk uh semi you know whether where you make your hair big and you put a lot of makeup yeah. on and try to look try to look yeah. cooler than you are. Yeah. So um and then the, the music um uh the other music place said uh, we're gonna do a, a compilation cassette and uh these guys, the West European pol- politics guys, and they were like, "Yeah, should we should we be in on that?" And I was like, "Why don't we form our own uh, uh, community? Let's call it the Music Factory, since we're rehearsing in an old factory." Mm, nice. uh, yeah. So they said, "But well, it's just, it's just us." No, 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 no. It's you and it's you and it's us. And then I know these guys and these guys and that band and this band, and we're more than ten bands. That's enough for community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's do that. And uh, so the first, I think it's here somewhere. <laughs> first cassette. Um, okay. Oh, great. Uh, oh, yeah. A nice looking studio. So this is, so this is the first cassette that we. Um, oh, can you move it a little bit room. closer? A little bit closer. This is this, this is the the other the boring one. Hmm. Uh, oh wow! Music, yeah, yeah, yeah. music, and I think we're on this one. But then they're going to do another one, and they said, "Fuck it!" So we did this one. This is uh, uh, mm. this is oh, this cool, darker, man. as you can see. It's really and cool. These are yeah. the ba- and these are the bands like that are on it. It's restricted area. It's uh, forgotten prisoners. This perfect day. I'm sure you've heard oh, right. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. West European politics, the Stefan's ban at the time. And breakfast in Africa. Um, there you go. That's, that's, that's you. our land. Yeah. So well. then, uh, and then the popsicle people started hanging out there, and Komeda from oh, Luma, and, and Bear Quarter started hanging out. So, mm. yeah. It, we weren't part of the scene, we were the scene. Yeah. We were uh, the scene. There you go. Created and it. And then eventually, yeah, we created it for ourselves, and we had no we had no audience. We, um, we play for 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 uh, each other, and then out of nowhere, I guess it was like some sort of wind blowing in our direction, and we just happened to be just right, because yeah. suddenly all all the other bands in Kalefta who weren't part of our thing, they were just laughing at us dressing in black, and suddenly we weren't all dressing in black, and suddenly we had pop melodies, and suddenly we were on TV, and they were like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Whether you, yeah. you you're you're." Uh, you're shit. What are you doing on yeah. TV? You're the nerd. And we're like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It just happens. Yeah. How did great. the so? How did the obviously you went international? How did that come about? Like, when did you start getting big over in the UK and stuff? I think it was just uh, people stumbling upon our music. I think the first mm. first kind of mini break was. Um, we was we were signed to uh, an indie label in Stockholm called M and W, the Music mm. Network Waxholm, uh, and they went down to Cannes for the Midem Festival, I think, mm. and that's where a bunch of people just play stuff and and our song stood out. So suddenly we were released in Germany and Spain and and stuff. Mm. And uh, one of those um, get-togethers, I think Ben Wardle. Uh, who had started this indie label called Indolent, mm. uh, got to hear You and Me song and went wild. And mm. a couple of months later, they'd seen us play in Stockholm and we were heading over to Camden and and suddenly we are in, you know, in the yeah, enemy. Camden. And the uh, and the maker uh, melody makers uh, yeah. mm -hmm. top top ten favorite tracks from in the office lists and blah blah mm. blah and we were we were like what the fuck how cool is this pretty cool yeah that's pretty I mean, cool did you was that on the agenda did you have like international ambitions from the start um not really no absolutely not I mean the the ambition. Initially, it was to play two gigs in a row so we could call it a tour. <laughs> uh, so that was a, and also when we were when we released, we we financed our uh, our uh, EP, the Smile EP. Smile yeah. is the fourth song that didn't make it, so we just thought we we'll we'll stick that on the cover. Uh, the see the the main track was the Bees Cures to Lover, uh, and that was played on the radio, and we we. Uh, Honestly, we we uh, we we printed the single, so this might sound uh, uh, constructed in you know afterwards uh, for comedy uh, uh, reasons, but we actually said that even though we were just uh, a bit over twenty, to have something to show our grandchildren. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was what we said. Let's make a single so we have something to show our, our grandchildren. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was played on the radio, and then we um, uh, painted not that single, obviously, because it was too valuable. Some shit singles that I had, uh, you know, in the fifty p box, uh, yeah. and they were just printed. Uh, you still have a label on it, and we hadn't had gold singles because we'd been played once on the radio. Uh, <laughs> but then, so you painted the only, them gold, only... okay? Yeah, yeah, Shh. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's that one is a home. Otherwise, I was showing you. Mm. Yeah, we couldn't. We only we only had five hundred singles, so I couldn't afford to uh, waste five five of our precious singles. So I, I just took like I don't know some old Samantha Fox single or something, <laughs> sprayed it gold, and uh, and uh, Xerox copied um, uh, the label. Yeah. But then I remember ninety three, ninety four. We started talking about oh shit, she spilled the water. Hang on a sec. I'll, so I'll, I'll just uh, I'll have some more coffee as well. Wow, oh, I think you tell the water. It? Uh, yeah, she ha happened to bump into the boat. Oh, and uh, but I remember. Hang on. 
I remember uh, I remember us talking about Big Bang, which, which Bank is a Swedish name. It was just a joke name for like um, I don't know, you know the the big the big um, the big company uh, that we were up north being really bored and um, and uh, going on tour every now and again was uh, was the only escape we had from uh, winter in Kalefta. and everyone has moved by by now. To Stockholm, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. so we we found ourselves like doing nothing, having nothing to do, and just waiting for the weekend. And and we were saying, wouldn't it be nice if like the big bank in in England would call us and say, hey, you should uh, you should come here. And then eventually we got this fax. I believe it was back then. <laughs> fax. Uh, from M W. <laughs> from M W. Saying, hey, big uh, big bank called. Yeah, they want you to uh, come over, and we were like, "Really? Yeah." There's a there's a sub label to RCA, and they're really keen. Mm. And we were like, "For fuck's sake, big bank called," uh, but we didn't yeah. really have any ambition. This was just uh, this was just banter. We didn't really have any ambitions. But um, yeah. so we, I I call it my third uh, puberty, going to uh, coming to Camden in in August '95 because my oh, first man. peak brick pop, my first. My, uh, yeah, exactly. Just right into the cream. We sort of, what the yeah. fuck? What are we doing here? They have allowed <laughs> us in here. Uh, so I was, you know, when I was in uh, my gymnasium, I was quite late uh, growing up. So in the third grade, when I was eighteen, I, I basically um, got hair in places and uh, <laughs> uh, went went from boy to boy man, man boy. Uh, but then when uh, I met Stefan and, and that, that lot a couple of years later, that was my second puberty because suddenly I was with cool people in Kalefta and I was like, yay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then a couple of years later, I'm in Camden. So that was my third puberty. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, I'm in Camden. I can drink every day because everyone else is doing it. Sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> and yeah. I, I think you um, you toured with a few a few uh, big brick pop bands at the time, right? Sleeper and some bands like that. Is that right? Yeah, we had we had uh, that was our first tour. Mm. That was quite fun actually because um, let me see. Oh yeah, God, I had the. That's why I'm feeling odd. I had uh, the silence run, so it was like. Mm. <laughs> okay. uh, now I have some some now sort of surround some sounds. Special All right. sounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Ben. Together with our agent, put together uh, one of those sixty foot doll sleeper tour. Mm. So we were all, all on the same label, and it was it was nuts. Sixty foot foot dolls were crazy. Have and you got we any stories to... of um, debauchery and excess you can share with us? Uh God, yeah, um, <laughs> um, terrible things. No, but you know uh, the drummer in sixty foot dolls, he. Um, I'm outing him now. He he was the he was the son of a uh, of a preacher man of some sort uh, <laughs> in Newport in Wales, mm, and yeah. he was dating the big he was dating the biggest drug dealer in Newport apparently. Uh, right. oh, well, so she said, and uh, her uh, her nickname for herself was Super Tits, and she liked uh, to uh, to shag. She liked drummers, mm-hmm. and at one point yeah, I walked yeah, into the loo. Yeah, I walked into the, to the to the, into the loo with Carl uh, to have a wee wee, and uh, we heard sounds from the booth, and uh, <laughs> Carl was shouting, "Is that you, Super Tits?" <laughs> and from the booth, you could hear, "Oh, fuck off, Carl!" <laughs> but she had another drama <laughs> going, and that's All right. You know, that was their that was their relationship. So obviously, then. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, we made up stories to, uh, we we were having fun, you know. We made up stories to yeah. uh, confuse the, the Brits. So we um, we told told all, uh, all all sorts of lies. And one was that we, when you're friendly with someone, you dock. So you put your penis against the other man's penis, and you put your foreskin over the foreskin, and you dock. Uh, so obviously, Carl wanted to dock with me, and I had to duck back. <laughs> Because I, I, you can't fucking dot with 
uh, the guy who's going out with um, Newport's um, biggest drug dealer, uh, who's also l- likes to shag, yeah, shag drummers. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> a few drinks too many in uh, the Glasgow Hills and bar. I was docking with uh, my A and R Ben and yeah. Stefan, the dead can dance Stefan and Carl. Yeah. Who's, who's further down in the bar hears about this, comes running with his knob out and says, <laughs> "Now we need, Didn't now we get... need to dock." And I was like, "I can't, want to be yeah, I can't say no, I can't no. say no." Yeah. So I have no. to. And then my wife, my now wife Christina, comes over to me and says, "Did you dock, Carl?" Um, yeah, okay, it's just polite, just being polite for you. Yeah, I was yeah. just being polite, and she understands yeah. that. But she said, yeah. "You're not going to be anywhere near me." So we've seen a doctor. <laughs> so I was I was quarantined for a couple of months. Quite right, quite right. <laughs> That's so the, this is this go. was going on. This was going on all day and night. Uh, it was fun for us, you know, bored Quileftians, to um, yeah. suddenly be on tour with uh, two friend friend bands and uh, all the yeah. stupidity that we could um, that we we could conjure, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, in retrospect, it was it was stupid things going on. <laughs> you got to do these things, don't you? Yeah, when you're young, you got to do these things. Great. Well, the stupid thing is that we still do it now. Uh, <laughs> right. Docking. Dead can dance, Stefan. He's always no, we don't. Well, he's always do- docking. It can, it can, it can happen. Uh, yeah. But um, mostly, it's like um, we have after after parties, after shows that never end. And when mm. we when they end, you think they end. Then Stefan has always got another bottle of something, and he's um, uh, going off with members of the support band. And you meet him day after. And say, yeah, that was great, Stefan. I was like, what? Now we continued a bit after you went to bed. Oh, for fuck's sake, Stefan! You always win. We're too old for this. I know we're too old for this, but it's fun. It's still going. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, I guess we've got to talk about the You and Me song. I mean, when it took off, I mean, how how crazy did it get? Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty crazy. But it's you know, it's always almost gone crazier and crazier. It's like mm. yeah, you it's hear it everywhere still. still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, it's uh, you know, it's it was. I think it was Voyager the best love song of all time in 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 Ireland just a couple of years wow. ago. You know, yeah. side by side with you know songs by Frank Sinatra and Elvis and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, so this is still going on. Uh, we hit something. Uh, we hit, uh, as I used to say to to um, Swedish friends, the "You and Me" song is ABBA in England. It's not the one of those. It's you know, it's ABBA. It's you. <laughs> you go into a shop now in in London, and there's a there's a chance they might be playing the "You and Me" song. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of uh, me- mega mainstream. Can you tell us about writing the song? Well, it was supposed to, you know, speaking of uh, this uh, spotification of uh, of the of music life now, nowadays, this is where cable TV had just uh, appeared, mm. uh, at least yeah. for us. And it was, uh, you know, short commercial breaks. And I had this stupid idea that we'd make an album, which would be like a TV show. So you'd have a song and then you'd have a commercial break. Sort of, not really, but like a snippet of yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. of the song. And uh, you and me song was supposed to be that snippet. So it was supposed to be like a proper song before. And then it was going to be always when we fight, try to make it loud and everything's gone. I know you hate that ring. Next proper song. There you go. But then the, the on the morning when we were supposed to start production rehearsals, I woke up with this chorus in my head, and uh, I sang it to the others, and they were like, "Wow, let's stick it in." Uh, but that was like an indie chorus. But it, we thought it was fun to go from the bossa verse to the indie pop uh, chorus. Mm. And, and then we put in this string part do 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 in the chorus and then i was like fuck me this is this is huge so mm-hmm. i called the record company and they came around and listened to it and they said uh, um yeah 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 it's good 
not sure it's a single though, but uh, it's really good. And I was like, not sure it's a single. Now he's tried to revise his uh, his comment <laughs> by, I'm not sure it's the first single. No, 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 right. no. No, you say you, no. you're not sure it's a single. Full stop. Wow. So, uh, but you know, he was he was kind of right because we released it uh, either possibly November ninety four or something in Sweden, and mm. it didn't really explode. It was played mm. a lot. He was like B listed or something, but it didn't really explode. And then it was released in the UK late summer, I think, ninety five. Mm. Uh, and it did quite well, but same thing there. It was re-released a year or so later, and then it made That's the right. top twenty. Mm. And then everyone thought it was a number one, so they wanted to release it again. And then third, the release uh, was pulled because Princess Diana died to sit the, oh. the week of release. So, uh, and we thought we can't, you know, reschedule for a fourth release. It's too stupid. Even though mm. I think wasn't it Pulp who released. What was one of their first singles? I think they released the same song like six times or something. Really? And eventually... Well, yeah. It wasn't Disco 2000 or... It was one of the... the early... Oh, uh, is it Do You Remember? The... Remember the first time. That... It's that one, isn't it? Do You Remember the First Time? That... Yeah, yeah, I think it was that one. That was They re- released and released and released and eventually it made the top 40. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure we could have. But, you know, in... um. Looking back, it, it it is a number one, even though it wasn't the number one. It is a number one, yeah. or at least people think it's a number one, and they want to get married to, and they want to. Um... I was going to ask about that. It must be so many couples is like our song, right? Do you get invited mm. to weddings and shit like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we don't we we haven't done it. We have never done that, and uh, I'm not sure I could pull it off because it's, it's too private and it's too. It's lovely yeah. to get the letters, and I try to reply, and I try to send hellos and like little video. Um, have a have a good um, have a good wedding and a good party and all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. But to yeah. actually go go to unknown people's private parties seems. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. but it's it's a it's a beautiful thing to have put out into the world, though, right? To yeah, make so many yeah, people no, that I mean, happy, you know. So many babies we've made. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wedding, the, wedding um, night babies. Where's the most surprising place you've you've heard it? Uh oh, I don't know. Surprise! I mean, I've I've heard it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's always fun. A friend, you know, I was I was doing this TV show, um, which which is a big deal here. Uh, well, it it was this autumn, but we recorded it in in June. And uh, and this this old um, pop icon kind of person went straight after that with his um, he's married to a really famous. Or actually, it's not married because we're invited to their wedding. They've been together for twenty years. We're going to get married now. Mm. Yeah, he's got a very famous um, uh, AD. It's not the right word, but she she makes like furniture and, and everything. She. Makes a decor for you know hotels and uh, offices yeah, yeah. and and she won I think she won best designer yet yeah. well art director designer yeah. uh, well designer she won best designer yeah, yeah. Uh, in the world in Berlin last year and they yeah. went to Japan and sat down in a restaurant and obviously I got a clip straight after saying they've got mu- good music taste and they were playing you and me something in the restaurant <laughs> uh, which go. was but that's not really, you know surprising that this is what happens to that. That that evil little song, it just nestles itself into anywhere. Pops up, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That came up on that documentary actually. That a lot of the Swedish, that Swedish scene, it was it was really big in Japan. Is that right? Is that? Yeah, I that mean, not all not all the bands, I and mean, we weren't one of the mm. biggest ones. Uh, the oh, the okay. sweeter, the better, and and also it was just kind mm. of a it was a peak kind of uh, early, when we were quite busy doing England, uh, the Cardigans had a bit of a slice there and even mm. uh, even this perfect day and uh, what are they called? Uh, like Clabbery Jam. Bands that weren't really yeah, that big, yeah. even in Sweden, yeah. would uh, have a slice of Japan because they mm. they were like doing 
cute to see. So I guess you'd meet some fit that bill, but then we had like might be stars and hit and songs like that that weren't really yeah. uh, flavor, uh, the right flavor for the for the Japanese. But we were there. Yeah, yeah. We were there playing a couple of times, and it was it was great. Yeah. The crazy, bizarre culture. When you think it's kind of similar to ours, just uh, just a bit more rice and a bit more a bit more Asian. It's not. They like some yeah. of them. It's like they love and hate us. They they love that we're a <laughs> bit um, uh, outspoken and that we can jump up and down on stage and shit like that. But they think also think that we're a bit foul mouthed and, and a bit dirty and a bit uncivilized. So it's like a it's a conflict uh, I I sense when when you're there mm. and they keep, you know and they keep holding their mouth when they're laughing and they have a lot of. Uh, issues i'd say if 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 a european would behave like that we'd say hey you need to go see see someone <laughs> they're ashamed all the time it's like they're always ashamed i don't know oh, english people too they're always uh, embarrassed yeah, about well, you have, yeah yeah you have yeah. a bit of that yeah 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 um, we're just playing rude because we we don't know how to <laughs> say thank you and please and uh i'm sorry so uh, I, I remember going to the. We built a studio eventually in in, uh, in East London, and uh, yeah. the local pub. I walked in and I said, uh, "I'll have a pint." And uh, the guy looked at me and said, "A police wouldn't hurt." Mm. I was, I'm fat. I'm so rude because I was just. <laughs> I was you know I was worn worn out. We've been we've been working in the studio all night. And I was just worn out. But, you know, obviously you say, excuse me, sorry, is it possible, please, to... That's how you do it in English. And in yeah, English, you just yeah, say, yeah. Yeah. We're... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we talked we talked to quite a few bands on the podcast. They have, like, a, a, a massive hit. You had, like, two or three big hits. And then the next hit is big, but it's not quite as huge as the impossibly massive one. And then you get pressure mm. from the record company and stuff like that. Did did you have that kind of thing going on? Um, I'm, I mean, we didn't really have pressure because and we, we've always been quite um, tight when it comes to our songs and our demos. And we, we don't really like being sharing too much with uh, with the, the suits, mm. if you if you will. Uh, because yeah. they have all kinds of stupid uh, opinions, and if they yeah. like stuff, they like it. And if they don't like it, we like it. Uh, yeah. And sometimes you have hits, and sometimes you don't. Uh, we we even um, we came even to um, we started labeling mixes um, wrongly, so that they'd pick the right mix. So we uh, <laughs> we like we like this mix. You know, because if you open yeah. the A and R handbook, the first page it says "vocal up." Yeah, you yeah, have a vocal right, up, right. so we'd label the vocal down, vocal up, uh, no, and right. they, they'd say, uh, "Do you have a vocal up?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, and I, this is the one. <laughs> they said, "This is the one." Yeah, no, yeah. this is the one. That's the vocal down, <laughs> but it says "vocal up," so that's the that's, that's how we didn't involve them. But yeah. and also, I had a, a few rows here and here and then with because um, you know by the time we uh, started. Hanging out in in uh, in the big world, I was 29, 30. So I said to people when they would go, "Yeah, man, this is great, man." I said, "If you like it, it's lovely, and if you don't, that's fine. Just be straight with us because we're fucking grown up. Don't don't treat mm -hmm. us like we're sixty a sixteen year old boy band." And mm -hmm. then eventually, um, the the old head of uh, BMG, who became head of Sony BMG, who then became European head of Sony, which is still a good friend of ours, he'd say when we released the the American, the, the Yeah album, he, he would say, this is a great album, but it hasn't really got a big hit. So we're not going to waste a lot of money on, we'll, we're, we'll make one, one, uh, one video for Yeah, because that's an old song that might work. But otherwise, we'll just let it run. And I was like, fine. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, you're being straight with us, and we're still friends. And you don't have to bullshit us. If you believe in it, great. And if you think 
it's going to be a bit too dark or nothing stands out enough for it to make the charts fine um yeah. just just say it yeah yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's really one, that's interesting yeah um i mean yeah. the song hit is that is that kind of celebrating all of that kind of music industry nonsense or is it taking the piss or well that's actually music industry uh brilliance because we recorded in three hours in our hometown as a b-side i yeah. as 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 per normal i i don't really i mean i can write songs and i can i can arrange strings and i love melodies and harmonies but most of songs are just given to me by the invisible master of melodies so I wake up in the morning. That's kind of how it goes. I wake up in the morning and there's a song in my head and I record it and it was done. So I just said to, I had another B-side. We need another B-side because, you know, as it was back then, every every release had to... Uh, you had um, to have 15 B-sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, of di di different formats. CD1, <laughs> CD1 CD2, and 2. And and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> cassettes and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And we had a, we were lacking B-sides and I just, I, I've come up with a new B-side. So we uh, we went up north, recorded it in our in our friend's studio, and then a couple of days later, not Ben, but his boss, uh, Mike, I think his name was Mike, I forgot, uh, had called Ben back saying, "You know that new B side? I think it should be on the album. We should pull this and that song and put hit in." Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, but is it is, is the mix good enough? Well, it's a bit thin, but we'll see. And then. Like a couple of days later, they called back and said, "Well, actually, we don't only think it should be on the album. It should be, it should be the next single." Oh wow! And we should try to re remix it. And then we went into Polar Studios, which is the biggest was the biggest studio in in Stockholm, where ABBA did all mm. that shit, and mm. uh, did a really good, um, sonically good sounding mix. But it didn't really kick, so we we stuck with the uh, with the original B sides mix and it was our second top 20 so mm. that was that was a bit of a i'd never because it's just, just a stupid song uh which also struck me a couple of um uh, months ago that we were i was sat down talking to someone and said our two biggest songs internationally have been our two weirdest mm. you know one with a bossa nova yeah. us uh singing about making your girlfriend laugh when, when she's angry and another one that just drops the 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 weekdays and how mm. to when you go out get getting pissed <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah and and that idiot you know that idiot instrumentation of, -ni 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 it's just That's stupid. stupid so um we should make more stupid songs i guess <laughs> <laughs> it works so well it's great great uh, there was a there was a band we we played the we played in sheffield a couple of times and I think we also played same day in Reading, uh, David Devant and his spirit wife. Mm. Um, and uh, one of the members of the band, I don't know if it was, it was uh, the singer himself or his mum loved that song. He called us the One Andes. I really like the One Andes. Uh, I really like that song with the weekdays in it. <laughs> Such a sweet story. Yeah, Monday, How, uh... and then it's Tuesday, and then it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. How was the? How did the uh, the English sort of crowds compare to to the Swedish ones? Was it a similar sort of vibe? How, it go, yeah, it went I'd, down I'd, well over. Yeah, I'd say well, it, there's more people in England. You can play mm, Norwich, true. and it's, it'll be uh, a big crowd. But yeah. uh, no. It was kind of the same, you know, mid late nineties, mm. couple of really good years yeah. where we'd fill any any venue with, and there'd, there'd be more feet than than heads at the other gig, because if people were just jumping up and Crowd surfing, landing yeah. upside Crowd down. Surfing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was like it was great. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Do you get many crowd service at your gigs these days? Well, actually, the two the two first gigs were both sitting down and this is the first time in our lives it's like well stefan you're going to be 60 in a couple of years time so you want to sit down <laughs> when you go to the gigs so yeah. why why don't we allow uh, we didn't plan it i don't think it's going to be any more 
Uh, but the crowd surfing has gone down dramatically. <laughs> yes, because yes. I think there will be um, bones crushed uh, otherwise. Yeah, yeah. But the docking stayed at the same level, has it? That's, yeah, that's, docking. Yeah, that's uh, the yeah. dock. The, the, the docking will uh, remain at the same level till we die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Important. Um, oh. What have you got planned for the for the rest of the year? So you finishing up the tour? Uh, anything else? That's it. Just well, in Sweden, gonna... is it the tour? Yeah, it's it's only Sweden, possibly, possibly Norma Norway and Denmark, but nothing that I know yet. And our in English European agent has, uh, she's she's, you know, she, she we want to do like a few gigs now and again, but she's trying to, yeah. um, she's trying. I think she's trying to get us like a glastonbury or primavera Ooh. slot eventually oh, wow. but uh but nice. we're uh we're quite happy just doing a few gigs now we're going to be, do, be doing a couple of gigs in the summer uh mm. i have a bunch of shit that i've uh neglected now for uh, almost a year that i have to um since i was doing the the tv thingy all spring and summer and autumn so uh, I managed to get the one of those song done, and I need to get a few other things done. But uh, no, life is um, life is good. I'm I'm looking forward to some time off. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, man. sounds like you. Yeah, deserve it. Yeah, um, Neil, do you want to ask our uh, question? We ask all the yeah. So we just we ask this question to all our guests. But if you could have been in any other band at the time, sort of early to mid nineties. Which band would it have been and, and why? Oh wow, that's a really, really hard question. I'm I'm quite content being in our band. Uh How having been in our band or being that's yeah, good, yeah well, you know, yeah, I'm quite uh I love the the, the boys and the girl. Well the girl yeah. obviously married her. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I love our songs and I love our mixture of stuff. But I mean all those But if you could have been in another band. Uh, I mean, our band was the perfect mix of. <laughs> you know, it's all right. Of, it's all right. Of, of you know, uh, <laughs> pixies, pulp, blur. Like, not too uh, laid back, lazy like Tina Fagler, and not too cocky like Blur, and not too oh, great intellectual art. like like. Pulp and uh, not yeah. too uh, American uh, <laughs> on on off. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm quite happy being us. I, I'm trying to. That's a good man. Yeah. That's, That's good. all right. That's fine. Uh, we, we'll accept that answer. We'll if, accept it. But it's if fine. I, I, I can answer another question that is not the same <laughs> or not even similar, but almost. Is there any decision you could uh, reverse if you had the chance? Yes. Go on then. Uh, being asked to support Bowie in '96 and we turn it down without a debate. I, oh. I would. What, I what, what do you mean? Why? Uh, why is the good? To, yeah, that, I wish I could answer that question. <laughs> we were asked when we were doing the vocals for the Bags to Me album. Uh, our agent called us and said, "Bowie wants you to uh, do the European leg," uh, which I think was in January, February '96, mm -hmm. and we said, "No, we don't have time." Even though we could have just taken four weeks off, done twenty odd gigs, been sorry, greatest become... pop star that ever lived, but um, we don't have uh, time for you. <laughs> who sorry. was who was a, one of our all time favorites, and <laughs> we named our dog after him. And yeah. the thing is, we kind of uh, we kind of buried this. I don't know. I came up. I I remember this one late night, like two years ago. <laughs> but my brain is just saying that did we turn down Bowie? And Christina said, oh, fuck me. I think we did. Why? <laughs> Why? We didn't even talk about it. No, we just said we don't have time. We're in the studio. Yeah, you must because have we, we're gonna we, We're going to re release the biggest album uh, of all times. We don't have time. You know, it turned out we, we spent the rest of the spring and summer mixing and, and touring. We could easily have taken a couple of weeks off. Yeah. Stupid! It's stupid! It's fucking stupid yeah. decision. I'm ever. sure it was the right decision at the time. Yeah. Hey, right. don't beat yourself up, man. Come on. You got, well, you got Bowie we, the dog. We, uh, yeah, you yeah, could have docked with dog. Bowie, couldn't you? Yeah. You know I mean? With with the same height, I think. So it would have been perfect. 
<laughs> talking with Bowie, man, that'd be a dream. Yeah. Man. That would be, wow. that'd, be uh, yeah. that'd be something yeah. to show the show the grandchildren. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, that's yeah, brilliant. Man. Um we won't keep you guys longer. Um what's the best way if people want to keep up with stuff you're doing? What's the best social media or whatever to follow you on? I don't know. I, I I'm out. We're um we're on Instagram and we're on Facebook and we're trying to uh, update as much as possible. Uh, we're now with Universal as well, uh, which is a pretty oh, nice. big uh, record company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they're uh, doing stuff. I don't know. Um, just uh, Google Instagram the one and of and you'll and yeah, and you'll see uh, what's going on. Brilliant. All right. Thanks so much. Do I'm going to stop the recording, but um, don't, don't, don't leave just yet. Well, don't right. go just yet. So there we go. Pear from the Wanna Dice. What a cool guy. And he was really open and relaxed and really fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't really know what we we're going to get, did we? Because you don't do. You never do. How long can we go before we talk about docking? <laughs> Should we just get straight all, to it? It's all we all, it's all we will really want to talk about, isn't it? But... <laughs> what the fuck is it, Dave? You must know. Well, I have I have heard of that before. But the, <laughs> the funny thing is, I don't know if it's real or not. Well, he said it. The way he told it is that they made it up. Well, they made it up and claimed yeah. it was like a Swedish thing. But they, they sort of implied that. It yeah, yeah. But it, then the way he talks about it, it is as if it actually happens. Yeah. But then, yeah, it it's did like happen. a bit of enigma about it. Really? But it did happen. So it's not made up, then, is it? They made it up as a thing, but it didn't really exist. But then, because they'd made it up, then they had to do it to prove that it existed. So we ended up doing it. But I've heard of it. It is a thing in Sweden. I've heard of that? Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. done it or seen it. You must have done. Yeah. Come on. Get, having listened to this interview, I'm wondering if they were winding me up. It's like just a common way of like. Yeah, winding up the Brits one. or the foreigners. Maybe, it yeah, maybe it's their joke on us. There's not like an initiation when you join a Swedish family. You have to sort of dock with the, the male members of the family. <laughs> <Stop laughs> the father of the... Of the bride. Where we ask for someone's hand in marriage, you sort of... Yeah, you have dock. to dock first. It's a bit prejudiced, though, isn't it, for those that don't have any foreskin? Well, I was thinking about this. So it's like, like most most American men, our know, age, our generation, true. don't have foreskin. I think the fashion's kind of finished now, but like our generation of of, of men, basically in America, don't have foreskins. Yeah, have they stopped doing it to American boys then now? Not completely, but I think it's fallen out of fashion. Yeah. Yeah. If you are an American listening to this or watching it, let us let us know below. We ain't taking the piss. We're just genuinely curious. You don't need to provide pictures. Just, no. just comments. Fine. Actually, don't, don't. Right. <laughs> just but maybe comment. it's like they used to do it in America, but there's just been too many cuts, and now they can't afford to do it. Oh, maybe it you have to. I might have to get it done privately. I guess. Yeah, maybe Luke, you can sort of. I tr I thought I had a good joke there, but I failed to deliver it. Cutting the oh. full, cutting the yeah, yeah. budget, cut it? the foreskin. You... Yeah, Neil, can you edit that together to make it a joke? <laughs> Uh, we, could, we could pretend to laugh now and I can try and fit it in afterwards. <laughs> okay, then. So if you if you could dock with anyone, living alive or dead, who would you dock with? Oh, that's a good question. Dead? You wouldn't want to do that. It'd be horrible. But they, no, they're not dead. You wouldn't, you wouldn't dock with their dead body. They you would be the alive life. version of themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aha, yeah. yeah. uh -huh, right. Einstein, probably. Mind you, he mm. won't have any foreskin, will he? No. Being Jewish. Or maybe I could dock him, but he couldn't dock me. Yeah, I think that would probably work. Yeah. Give you a bit, give you the upper hand. I'd probably dock Michael Jackson just to see if, if he got excited. <laughs> <laughs> but you're too old for him, man. Why it wouldn't would prove it? anything. It wouldn't prove a thing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could, yeah. you could do it as your child self. I didn't yeah. think that's true. Yeah. And then yeah, we'd get to the yeah, truth. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I always think like he, what he said is, is a good point. It's important about height, right? So I was trying to think of someone who's a similar right, yeah, height yeah. that I could dog with. Like, I don't know, Tom Cruise, he's about the same height as me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he'd be a, be a good, good one. one. I think he, he was probably the generation before they started chopping. So I reckon he yeah. might be, he might be available. Be a good one. Mm. 
I didn't know you admired him so much. Oh, my God, I like a bit of Tom Cruise. He's he's mental, he's right. isn't he? He's mental. Yeah, in a fun <laughs> way. He is completely mental, but in a, in a fun way, you know? Yeah. Uh, we watched uh, A Few Good Men the other night with, with Alice. She hadn't seen it before. Is that the, uh, you can't handle the truth? Wow. Yeah, uh, it's probably, mm. it must be my favourite film. Oh, you dirty fucker. Why? It's, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Boring as shit, really? Well, it's definitely the best courtroom film. Better than My Cousin Vinny. I haven't seen it. I saw that at the oh. cinema, I'm sure we saw that at the cinema. All right, are we done with docking? Can we move on to more sensible reflections from the uh, interview? Maybe we could have a docking special, you know, on another time, another, on another occasion. Well, I, I tell you what, if, if you're watching or listening and you can, there's some sort of comment section, let us know if you would dock with. But what about the female watchers? I was going to say, what, what about do? the... Oh, um, it's difficult... Is there a female version of docking? I don't know. Um, well, again, answers, in, answers in the comments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're a, a bloke and a female, then it's... It's just sex, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you, the, that's a very narrow definition of sex, isn't it? Penetrative sex. Yeah, that's oh, why yeah, I yeah, rephrased okay. it to intercourse. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go on, go on. Nice, fair comment. We are we are living in the two thousand and twenty four. So obviously, it hits you when when you listen to him how British he sounds. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. Excellent English, obviously, and sounds English. But I was yeah. thinking when I was there in Sweden, I think a lot of people do make a conscious choice whether they want to speak with a British accent or an American accent. Yeah. So it'd be interesting really. to know if uh, Nane, Nina, is it Nina from the Cardigans? She does have a bit of a, an American twang. Mm. Yeah. Like it's interesting. But it wasn't only the accent, it was the vocabulary and the idioms. They were all kind of British stuff. He said, you know, uh, use the loo and, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, sex on legs. These are very kind of British kind of things to say, right? I think the Swedish might have more of a dry sense of humour than 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 the British, is it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's drier. It's good, I like it. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting. He said, there's no point in making an album because most people won't hear um, most of the tracks Mm. on the album. So he says, you know, if there's eight or nine tracks that are not singles, then most people are not going to bother listening to the whole thing. So why bother making an album? In a previous episode, didn't I say people don't make albums anymore and you... Yeah, you laughed me off the show. I I did, I did, and um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe no, I'm wrong. I think that people do still make it albums, but I think with with social media out, it is it makes more sense. I think a lot of times just to release music whenever you you don't have to wait to make an album to release a mm. song now. Which mm. is but that's ridiculous. really interesting, right? Yeah, I mean, if you know that like eight of your ten tracks are going to be ignored by ninety five percent of people, then why bother? I mean, it's totally understandable, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it makes makes total sense, doesn't it? Uh, what about B sides? It's not really B sides either, is it? No. You just get the single, and then maybe a yeah. a remix of the same single. Mm. Yeah, that's all. Same right. Well, about. like like he explained, what a lot of people are doing is they're they're putting the previous single as as the the second song on on the new single. But yeah, people just don't buy buy records anymore, do they? In general, I know you buy records obviously mm. but when a lot of people do people don't go and buy like cd singles and stuff anymore they do they but young people not probably on do, the, do they? not in do the they? same way not surely sure they do they like music but they've never bought a cd your son or doesn't own a cd collection at all like, old no he's just got it all online mm. like, we just yeah. got the family mm. spotify account yeah right but if he was like totally into music he would do He'd have, yeah, maybe. Yeah, but the I mean, yeah, my my niece has bought a record player now because she's getting into mm. that sort. Of, she's that. Mm. She's early twenties, so it's not not how she consumes all her music. Do you know what I mean? She's got a record player for a few selected albums, or whatever. But she's still the majority of her stuff is just online. Isn't it? She doesn't wake up one week and go, oh, "I've got to go and buy that single from Woolworths or whatever." That's because there's no there's Woolworths. no Woolworths. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, she would. Although the whole album thing, it's a shame that that's got kind of disappeared. It's also great for stuff like that, where it's like, I've written a song. There you go. I think, I mean, they're, they're not like a full-time enterprise, right? No, true. So I think that's why they're having that. Yeah. If you're like a band and this is like your full-time thing, then you're still going to make an album, I think. But yeah, I, I think bands will always want to make albums because that's that's it's just... 
that's what you do when you're in a band, isn't it? You make an album. Yeah. Although, speaking of record companies, I thought it was interesting there in the interview, there were yet more stories of record companies not having a fucking clue about anything. Yeah. I love the way that they didn't get angry about it. They just used the information they had against them and just, you know, were able to manipulate them how they wanted. But how do these fuckers get these jobs? I don't understand it. Businesses, aren't they? They're businessmen. That's yeah, but, you, but, if, but a good business, need, you, you need someone that has that skill set. And if you haven't got that skill set, then you, you're not a good, you know, business. Look at uh, the government. They're not running the country like it should be right. Yeah, but you don't have, they don't. To, they don't have to They don't have to put in application forms and show their CVs and shit to get that job, do they? They just have to have enough money to be able to, to run and all that, you know. So It's, it's all hierarchies, isn't it? And, who you know and all that sort of thing. Yeah, probably. Yeah, especially in the nineties. You know, like Terry Christian talks a lot about it. Like the media world just being full of like middle class people employing their middle class friends and or upper class even, not even middle class. And I'm pretty sure the music industry was pretty much the same as the TV and just T V industry back then as well. So yeah, maybe that's just it. Yeah, he said about the word, didn't he, Terry Christian now? They didn't have a clue on that either. And if he hadn't been yeah. there, it would have just been a totally different show. Yeah, one thing I've picked up on, you know, you mentioned those two albums, they didn't do do well outside of Sweden, but they were in English. And uh-huh. his story about why he chose English, it was just sounded like purely technical matter. You know, mm. the sound of the English sounds better with his songs. And he said mm. they use mock English, which I imagine is just garbled, stuff mm. that has no meaning but it's just with mm. english syllables in it i think some some countries use english because it sounds a little bit it's not as harsh it's quite a, but the swedish language is quite a romantic language i think it's quite sort of uh, rolls off the tongue and it's quite nice can you be racist towards languages i don't know <laughs> try you can no Give it a go. <laughs> I just did. I just did. You can do better than that. Come on. I mean, German's quite a harsh language, right? So, yeah, that's yeah. better. That's better. I think you still got a little more racism in you about languages. Come on. I mean, you know, if you're singing in, in Chinese, no one's going to have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading a book about ratio linguistics uh, last week, actually, and um, there was a whole there was a whole chapter on the concept of Ching Chong, like this um, kind of made up kind of Chinese. Word. Can I just say I was just using the Chinese thing for to be funny. It wasn't. I didn't mean. I know. It. <laughs> and the I German know. thing. I know. I, I know. We know. We know. We know. We know. It was interesting, though. It was about the you know, the concept of, of of the phrase Ching Chong and how you know it's been used as kind of like a a way to racialize you know negatively racialize chinese people exactly exactly um it's interesting it's interesting to read about yeah but um i was also uh they weren't from sweden they're from norway him you know him i you know like him the band a kind of metally kind of gothy thing yeah 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 so they 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 said that they they sing in english because it's a the love song sound better in english but I'm not, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. Oh, speaking of Norway, did you fuckers listen to um, A Blaze in a Northern Sky to Dark Throne? Well, well I, I did listen to about 10 <laughs> seconds of it and that was enough. <laughs> enough to know that you loved it? The one I listened to the one you put on the playlist and that was enough. And guys, and? Changed everything. Changed everything. <laughs> Ch- changed, the, changed the CD. I haven't <laughs> stopped listening to it since. No, no, you didn't. You didn't enjoy it. No, nah, it's, it's a bit heavy for me, mate. Sure, I, I sure. like a bit of metal, but that's just I can't. <laughs> Too old. Don't like it. It's all good. I'm going to segue into what you were Go just on. talking about with him. Speaking of love yeah. songs, um, I thought it was cool. He said, you know, it, it's it was uh, you and me song was voted like you know best ever love song and that kind of thing. I've, I've I, you know, I've got I've always said about love songs. I, I don't like love songs that are like ballads. So I think no, You I and Me song is like the perfect love song because falling in love should be fun and upbeat and should be full of rainbows and unicorns and shit. It shouldn't be like oh, somber, quite... sincere, earnest kind of ballad because that's boring. Falling in love is fun, right? Showing your sincere side there. Mm. Oh, I, I didn't really mean to. A, I didn't mean to. Really I apologise. 
<laughs> I mean it though. I mean it though. I, I, I think the best love songs are the like upbeat ones, you know? Yeah. See, I go the other route. I do go the other route. The darker, the better for me. But love is not boring. It's fun, you know? It should be fun. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I just don't see you and me song as a love song. But if you think about it, it is. I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, but I just, in my brain, I don't class it as a love song. Just a good song, you know, a really good single. To be fair, that shit wouldn't work in my house. Kiss you once or twice and everything's forgotten. Fuck off. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> not a chance. That shit wouldn't work. Wouldn't fly. Go on in. Favourite love song? Uh, what? You're asking can me? can be a boring one. Yeah, both of you. You know, it will be. And I, I'm not going to shy away from... What is it? Love song. What is it? Oh, Bites by Def Leppard. Oh, that's a good oh, one. I, do. I like that song. It's yeah. Crazy. It's the perfect 80s rock ballad. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Dave? Yeah. Oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to think about it. I'll come back. Yeah, it's a difficult question. I do, yeah. I mean, I do like The Power of Love by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Oh, that's good. Mm. That's a good one. Just go with I that. I do like that one. Oh, you've gone for these earnest ballads. Okay. Yeah, that's us, you see. Mine, I was thinking about it, and I, I, I've got a few of mine. Can I show you? You have to edit this. I'm going to get up. I'm going to not going to dock. I'm not going to dock. <laughs> that's, a, that's the first time we've seen this derriere on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Hey, a lot of people people pay good money for that. He doesn't know there's a hole around where his anus is in his jeans. <laughs> oh, <I do. laughs> no, it's but, literally hanging out. His butt could be our new logo. <laughs> is it? Does it look like yes. um, Bruce Springs, like born in the USA? A little bit. Yeah. It's um, not where. It's this one. Go on. Goody Goody Gumdrops by the, the 1910 Fruit Gum Company. Do you know it? Of course not. Well, our <laughs> listeners might know it because... Um, oh, no, the Teenage Goody Goody Gum... Yeah, I know that. Teenage oh, Fan Club did a cover of it that was on uh, an enemy yeah. cover cover tape uh, I didn't in, uh, that in the mid-90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the original's better and it's just total bubblegum pop and uh, I think it's uh, the, ultimate, the ultimate love song. Yeah, I like the Teenage Fan Club version, so I'll have to check that one out. That's yeah, good. It's yeah. good. No, I know what you mean. You're right. Love songs should be upbeat and happy and stuff if you want to equate yeah. it with love. Fucking, should be fucking fun, man. You know? I'll go down the darker bit. Same with films as well, you know? Anything mm. that shows kind of these kind of, like that, that kind of fun aspect is uh, always works for me. You know, I film weddings. Neil Collins films. Yeah. <laughs> you get some film companies that, that do the upbeat, quick cuts, happy, you know heart sunglasses and all that and then mm. I go down the other route where you make it look like room. a funeral yeah. you make it look like a <laughs> <laughs> Death Leopard but, video from the, yeah like, you know, kind of yeah yeah there's, I want it to sort of make people cry pull at the heartstrings yeah that's good though man yeah that's good but you know that is a good example of the two very different styles of, mm. of telling mm. the same story you know? do your customers know that before they buy I bet you put a few cheeky jokes in though, don't you? I don't. There's no there's nothing fun about my stuff. <laughs> no. I'm not selling it, am no. I? They are good though. They are. To be fair, I think it, I think a lot of it is it's much easier to write a sad song than it is a happy one. That's true. Mm. I've seen a lot of people talk about this in interviews. It's very hard to write a happy song, but it's really easy mm. to write a really sad one because there's certain chord structures that just sort of allude to that. And also, if you have a happy, faster song, you've got to write more of it because you've got more beats. Yeah. With a slow mm. song, you only, you have to write a few. <laughs> Eek it out. Much yeah. less so it's slower. It's true, though, yeah. <laughs> they are easier songs to write. Huh. It's, easy, it's easier to write a ballad than it is a, an upbeat sort of pop song, I think. I thought his reflections on Japan were, were good, but obviously you know better, <laughs> Luke, because you live there. They were slightly negative. Weren't they a bit problematic? Uh, they, were, bit. they were. They were. They were. When I listened back, they weren't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, you said they always seemed ashamed of something. Mm, not really. I mean, just like I don't think it's any different to like British people who are like permanently embarrassed, right? Yeah. But yeah. you know, it made it reminded me when I met you know Yoko once said uh, that Japanese people they they think all Westerners stink. Is that true? <laughs> I think she was just talking about you. 
<laughs> That's how you like to frame it, but she just said, you, you stink. <laughs> <laughs> it could be that. Well, no, <laughs> that although it it is, no, it is true that most <laughs> Japanese people don't, don't, have, don't get BO, basically. Well, because of deodorant, they just don't get it. They don't get it. They just don't get it. No, no matter how much they sweat, they just don't get BO. Like Prince Andrew. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't sweat. They sweat. They just don't get BO. He can't sweat because it's because of his bravery. <laughs> because of his bravery, he can't sweat. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> most ex soldiers can't sweat because of their bravery. It just happens. Yeah. You know, part of the, part He's a of, bloody part of the... hero, isn't he? <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't stink um, for a start. You can say many things about Prince Andrew. One thing you can't say is that he stinks. We might smell of other things. I mean, you, you, you mean sure, like sure brothels. he's a paedophile, but he doesn't <laughs> doesn't smell allegedly. <laughs> what? I well, we have, much to, we have by to now. say. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, but so if you are one of the, the very small minority of people that do get BO, because sometimes there are, most people have an operation to... What? Really? That's yeah. Nuts. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah. all of this is telling me they, mu- it, they must think that people, Western people smell. They must do. Well, no, because people don't smell, do they? Because they wear deodorant. So they, they do. No, they, most people London, don't. Like, on a summer's day. There's well, it depends if Dave's in there, sure. But I mean, ordinarily, I don't think people do because they wear deodorant. Yeah. But over here, people don't need to wear deodorant, basically. I still get mine. In, I, buy my, I buy deodorant from um, American America. Um, it's the well, cheapest surely. way to buy deodorant that works. You can buy it here, but it doesn't work. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not strong enough for my uh, Western uh, armpit. Why don't you have that procedure done? Yeah, I'm thinking about it because you can have it done on like um, it's one of the the ones that's covered under like the national insurance, so you pay like thirty percent of the, of the costs. Do um, the, uh, so yeah, I'm thinking your, about it. I might come and have it done too. <laughs> it's a good idea, right? Save money on deodorant. Do your students call you old stinky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wear deodorant, so that so I don't smell. I bet they do though. When you're not, you're not in the room, yeah, I wonder what they do yeah, call probably. you. Oh, yes. You know, have you ever seen um, Dead Poet Society? If you've ever seen that, it's a little bit like that whenever I walk in the room, basically. People jump up on the desks, clap, um, call me, call me Shout, captain. captain. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a bit like that, basically. Yeah. They don't just stare down at their smartphones and grunt as I walk past them. They, they definitely <laughs> jump on the desks. I know we've gone off tangent, but I really do need to know how this operation works. So just cut your armpits off or something. I think they take out like the the, the gland, the sweat gland or something. I, I yeah, I don't it seems know. A bit, mm. It seems a bit extreme. It's a standard procedure. Yeah. But, well, most people don't need it, but if you do need it. Just from the armpits or every smelly place in the body? Pits only. So it doesn't help breath. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Although interestingly, there's um at the moment because it's um since like the end of of uh, of 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 the pandy, there's loads of tourists in Japan at the moment. So um, mm. a lot of um a lot of restaurants have put up signs um saying like um, no perfume, and so in, in English signs in English saying no perfume. Oh, so you can't hide it. There's nowhere to hide. Well, yeah, well not like not excessive perfume, basically. Yeah. So they want to. They want to just put no just, Americans. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Just, no, no, no. They, Americans don't wear too much perfume. Don't, I don't mean deodorant. They mean like perfume. They're trying to find the stinkers. Like out. Middle Eastern countries and stuff wear a lot of perfume. This is interesting. I didn't know any of this. So, But it ruins the taste of food, right? And it annoys other diners. So if it's like excessive perfume, you know. I wanted to bring up the song Hit, you know, talking about how the silly songs did the best. And it was just like, he just went through the days of the week. But yeah, I just wanted to shout out some days of the week songs. Oh, that's a good one. Go on, him. Obviously, I'll go first with seven days. You know, it's brilliant. Craig David. Yeah. He goes through the whole week. I mean, Friday, I'm in love, obviously. Friday, I'm in love, yeah. Yeah. Does he go through the whole week? Yeah. 
Yeah, it does. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, so it has to has to cover the whole week. It doesn't have to. Oh, not necessarily, just... no. No. Because yeah. I was going to go with I don't like Mondays. Oh, right. Yeah. Dark, again, dark, going dark. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, if, if it's only mentioning days of the week, I'll go with Sunday, Sunday, uh, blur. Oh, Sunday, their, bloody Sunday. Best. Or Sunday, bloody Sunday, yeah. Do you remember they used to play Sunday, bloody Sunday at that club in Calador at the end of each... No, no. Well, the am I the only one that remembers this? We went on holiday in New York in 94? It was 1994, yes. Yeah, 94. We were 17, yeah. Yeah, but this is a nightclub, and uh, it just played like normal songs. It's, and at the time, um, Saturday night was the big hit. It hadn't reached yeah. the UK yet. They, yeah, had, yeah, they were yeah. all doing the dance already, and we didn't know what the fuck was going on. At the end of each night, they played, you know, that, like some clubs have like a chucking out song. There's Sunday Bloody Sunday. It seems like an odd choice. Sunday shorts. Bloody Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Half part is best. Yeah. Yeah. It's just about the fact there's nothing on telly and stuff, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seemed like an odd sort of song to finish the night, but they always yeah. did. No one remembers it but you. I had one more point talking about the... Uh, the concept of their album that he had, you know, with commercial breaks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. He was going to do, it was almost like a concept album yeah. with little bits. But then, mm. of course, that little bit he was going to do turned out to be the massive hit. Yeah. So I guess the concept went out the window. What's your, what's your take on, on skits in albums? I'm not a fan. I think usually they, they don't work. Dawn FM by The weekend. That's really, I like that album a lot. And that's got a lot of bits in between. You're a weekend fan. Mm. Yeah, man. Dark Horse. But haven't you heard that album? It's like number one album in the world for months. I hate it's, that guy. He's got a good voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you like The Weekend. <laughs> I do. I, I think it's good. I just wouldn't yeah. have had you to down as being a no. weekend fan. But are there any gangs in Berwick? Gangs, yeah. North side of the road and the south side of the road. Right. Oh. We never yeah. mix. Is it like the Bloods and the Crips? Yeah. I liked, I liked his story of um, refusing uh, David Bowie's touring invitation. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because they were, they were busy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's he a good story. I just think that's like evidence of some kind of almost like a glitch in the space-time continuum. Like someone has gone back in time and just stopped them doing that uh, <laughs> Bowie support. There's oh, no yeah. explanation for it. And that's no, why they right. can't understand why they did it. But like he said, they said they didn't yeah. even think about it. They just said, oh, no, well, we're doing the album at the moment, so of course we can't do that. But <laughs> then thinking about it, of course they could have done, you know. I think Dave's uh, first of events is probably true then. I think you're probably right. That's what happened. It's the only yeah. It's the only yeah. explanation. On that note, that's the end of this this week's episode. If you are watching, then please do give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Obviously, tell us who you'd like to dock with. Favourite love song. Favourite love song. There you go. And if you are watching, then please do remember to subscribe to the channel. If you are listening, then please do rate and review. Really does help us. Podcast found. Uh, Luke, how's the next tape coming on? I haven't even started it. Usually, I'm, I start, I make it as I'm as I'm listening, but I, I was listening to the interview and cycling right. today, so I didn't get a chance to do it. So um, it'll be there. It'll be there. It'll be good. Oh, last week's one was a cracker. The nostalgia aspect of it is hit hard. Make sure you put seven days on it. Just made a note now. Yeah. All that is left to say is uh, see us on the Swedish. Give it another chance. Go on. This on en minute. <laughs>